as the earth makes another revolution around the sun, another year greets us. But the nightmares never end in this place. Johnson Combian, aka Berger, who is alleged to have been behind the killing of a number of policemen at Tamale recently, was in court amidst heavy police protection. He appeared to have sustained multiple injuries on his body and leg and was charged for escape from lawful custody. The prosecution, led by state attorney Anthony Redu, told the court that the accused was remanded in custody by a Tamale court for robbery, but he escaped lawful custody. He explained that while in hiding, he stole a tape recorder and was sentenced to six years imprisonment at Gambaga, where he escaped again with the help of a prison officer whom he was alleged to have bribed with 4,000 CDs. Dearly beloved, this story is not a spin-off of Prison Break. This is not fictional. A man so tactful that prison bars could not hold him back. A man with blood on his name. A man known as Johnson Combian Gulkun. My name is John Andrew Addo and welcome to this den of nightmares. The sanctuary of screams and this repository of stories forged of the blood of both the innocent and the guilty. Welcome to Mayhem. Our story on the man known as Garkum or Boga begins in the town of Nakbanduri in the northeast region of Ghana. Nakbanduri has always been known to be a quiet town characterized by its open spaces, its farm culture, and brutal amatan, as is the case currently. Unfortunately, Nakbanduri would be subject to a reign of terror by someone who was seen once as a young boy known as Johnson Combian Gulkun. Growing up, Johnson faced adversity. He would drop out of school in class 6 and would eventually join a gang of local area boys who were truants and who always bullied students. It was not long before his imposing physique and rumored magical powers made him a local champion of some kind. He and his gang would terrorize the community in which they lived, robbing and stealing with impunity. His acts would become so synonymous with crime and he would grow in popularity. However, the genesis of Johnson's problems would begin when he and his accomplices would rob a man and his family of their hard-earned money along with a three-battery tape recorder. This matter would get to the Nakbanduri chief's palace and when summoned, Kombian would refuse to listen and he would not honor the chief's invitation, at which point the police would come into the picture. Policemen were sent for his capture, but Johnson and his men would engage with this unit of the police in a gun battle which is said to have lasted for about an hour.
What followed was a deadly confrontation that left two officers dead and others injured. Fleeing for their lives in the aftermath, Combian and his men would flee to northern Togo in an attempt to seek refuge. But the long arm of the law would not relent. As it would turn out, Combian was already the subject of crimes that the police had identified, especially when it came to the snatching of motorcycles at gunpoint around the Nakpanduri Scarp and surrounding areas. He was also pinned as being a mastermind for so many different violent criminal activities. Because of all of this, a nationwide manhunt would ensue with billboards featuring his face plastered across Nakpanduri. Eventually, he was apprehended whilst visiting his wife and sentenced to six years in prison at the Tamale Central Prison, even though he declared he was innocent in 2007. However, this would only be the beginning of his story. On the 15th of January, 2010, at around 4 a.m., Combian was found to have escaped. At the time of his escape, he was also facing trial for a number of cases, the offenses of which consisted of robbery, attempted murder, possession of firearms without lawful authority, escaping from lawful custody, and a bunch of other crimes. He would escape attacking a pedestrian and taking his Haoju motorcycle, leaving chaos in his wake. In a shocking turn of events, the police's pursuit led to violence and destruction in Nakwanduri. A police operation would be carried out, which would result in the destruction of property and injuries to civilians. Over 100 armed officers, acting on the orders of the police high command, raided the town in search of Johnson Combian. The operation caused significant damage, including the burning of 21 houses and stores, a fuel station, supermarkets, and food crops. Additionally, innocent civilians including young and elderly people, women and children, were injured during the raid. But Combian would not be intimidated in any way, shape or form. It is said that he even sent text messages to some senior police officers, including regional commanders, threatening to kill them. He was said to have fleed to not only Togo, but neighboring Nigeria as well, before returning to his hometown, seeking refuge once more. On October 17th, 2010, Combian caught wind that the police were around his vicinity, looking for him. He and his accomplices would succeed in attacking and ambushing three police officers, Constable Prince Ajare, Constable Owusu Frimpong, and Corporal Osei Bonsu. This incident would once again occur in the Napanduri Scarp. Combian and his men would fire gunshots at the policemen who were said to be on a motorbike. And after this, the policemen would fall into a 10 meter long valley. Combian and his men would continue firing shots into the valley in hopes of killing the policemen. The firing would stop 
and the policemen, thinking they had escaped the situation, would come out of their hideout but would only be subjected to more gunfire by Combien and his relentless batch of henchmen. The wounded policemen would be taken to the Naliru hospital. But unfortunately, Constables Ajari and Frimpong would meet the end of their lives. The police, in a relentless pursuit of Combien, would continue to carry out their manhunt for him in the twin villages of Danvorga and Danugu. Somehow, some way, he would escape into neighboring Togo again. But three days after the restart of this manhunt, at about 10 p.m. on October 26, 2010, the police once again would have a tip-off that Combian had resurfaced in Nakbanduri, specifically in Gomsuka. This would lead to a massive police manhunt operation, which was launched not only in Gomsuka, but other parts of Nakbanduri. Police would eventually round up 17 people who were suspected to be tied to Combian or may have aided him at one point in time. Combian was also accused of rape, murder, and robbery. Eventually, on the 19th of November 2010, Combian was finally apprehended by Interpol in Togo after he was tricked by an informant that his girlfriend was seriously sick in Togo. Unbeknownst to him, an ambush had been laid for him and he was immediately arrested once he crossed the border from Ghana. He was transported to Lome and handed over to Ghanaian authorities at their flower border. One would think the story of Garkum would end at this juncture after being sentenced to 30 years in prison for conspiracy to commit murder and to death by hanging for murder, it will not be the end. On November 7, 2016, at the Insawam Medium Security Prison, at about 1.35 a.m., Combian would once again come extremely close to escaping the facility along with two other inmates before being caught leading to the answer one prison going into lockdown Johnson, Combien's story is one that generated so many problems and so many questions internally when it came to prison security and the maintenance of the facilities across the country. Believe it or not, the one description I gave of Combien's escape from the Tamale prisons is not the only one. It is actually one of three successful breakouts of prison by Combian and is actually one of two breakouts from the same Tamale prison. Now, almost two weeks after Combian broke out from prison in 2010, there would be a probe into this incident which led to so many things being uncovered. The first of which was that there were 13 prison officers on duty at the time of this incident. Furthermore, Combian was said to have been shackled to the wall at the feet. Investigators had been able to deduce that Combian was able to escape 
by the ventilation hole in the prison wall which was actually covered by wire mesh he had found a way to get rid of that wire mesh and create space within the wall that held the wire mesh it was also said that the shackles were practically undamaged leading people to believe that he had forced his legs out of those shackles which sounds very painful and should definitely leave broken bones at least per the angle at which you'd have to force his legs out of these shackles this of course did lead to some speculation that a prison officer must have helped Combian escape this particular assertion would somewhat come into play during his first hearing upon his capture in November 2010. Allegations and claims would be made that it was actually a prison guard who had helped Combian escape from the facility. Combian himself would actually claim to bribing a prison officer with 4,000 Ghana cities in order to secure his freedom. Going back and looking at all the footage from this first hearing, he was injured, he was beaten up, almost out of life, and yet still shackled at both arms and legs. And if that does not speak to the level of danger with which he was seen, it's impossible that anything else would. Furthermore, Combian was also tied to the deaths of the two officers, which I spoke about earlier. And over the course of time, specifically over a near five year period, Combian would continuously show up in court in defense of his name. He would always appear in court shackled, chained up, with armed policemen at his side, preparing for the possibility of him escaping. He would even playfully charge a photographer in 2014 for pictures that this photographer had taken of him upon his arrival to a court proceeding. Ultimately, in 2015, Combian would be sentenced to 30 years behind bars for conspiracy as well as being sentenced to death by hanging and in a bone chilling statement that was made by the trial judge at the time justice habib logo he would say this i know it may not happen but if it does may god have mercy on your soul it is at that juncture that he serves his sentence in the insawam medium security prison in the condemned cell i am quite certain that the question you had in mind instantly was why wasn't combian sent to a maximum security facility because of course he had escaped prison a total of three times at this point in time why then would he be sent to a medium security prison you see as it would turn out in sawam medium security prison is the only prison in ghana that has a condemned cell furthermore it is also the location of the gallows for those who are sentenced to death by hanging, this is where they meet their ends. And for a time, Combian, through his legal representation, his lawyer, Mr. George Asameni, would appeal this death sentencing, saying Combian thinks the conviction and sentence was too harsh, excessive and out of date he would also bring to light the opinion that the court had indeed not proven their case against him 
without reasonable doubt because that is a very important element of criminal cases you must prove beyond reasonable doubt that a person is guilty and in this context he did not feel as though that applied to him of course this would be thrown out it is of importance that we speak about this death penalty or capital punishment as it is known in legal context if you will you see the last time there was any execution in this respect of any kind in ghana you would have to go all the way back to 1993 31 years ago the death penalty in of itself is not the newest punishment known to man it is in fact one of the oldest it's almost biblical old testament an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth it was always seen as a form of justice a retributionist punishment because for life taken life is required and in ghana the two most popular forms of this would be either the firing squad or the gallows the stories of it being carried out especially when it comes to the gallows are very frightening at best there is an account by david mercy a man who was once on death row who received a presidential pardon in 1999 he would describe the terrifying ordeal of being in prison and seeing prison guards come in at night armed to the teeth ready to take someone to meet their end a person is taken into this room where the gallows are housed it's actually on a platform of some kind with a wooden ladder the person is led up after which their hands and legs are tied securely at which point the noose is fastened to their neck and they are led onto a platform in addition a weight is tied to the legs of the person and after standing on this platform a lever is pulled the weight dropping effectively leaving this person with absolutely no support but the noose around their neck this coupled with the weight around their legs causes their necks to snap and death alone to be their only companion once death receives the condemned their body is dropped into a pit where it is later collected and put into one of two coffins that have been donated by a mosque from the gallows it is sent to a nearby room with a slab where the body is washed and prepared for burial in july 2023 the criminal offenses amendment act and the armed forces amendment act were voted upon by parliament it would be these two pieces of legislature which would effectively end or strike out the death penalty in ghana at least when it comes to ordinary offenses as it stands now the only offense to which the death penalty is said to be applicable is high treason effectively what it has also done is people who were sentenced to the death penalty now had their sentences converted into life imprisonment sentences and for now it may seem as though this is a fate that Combian and over 200 other inmates in the condemned cells of Insawam 
have averted. But does that end the story? You see, I mentioned earlier that since 1993, no death executions, no death sentences have been carried out. And that has only boiled down to the fact that heads of state have not signed their death warrants. They have been very much unwilling to sign them. One thing I have not mentioned up until this point is how these death sentences are decided on and carried out. You see, for crimes where the death sentence may become a possibility, juries actually are appointed and serve on these cases. The little known thing about these circumstances is it is not up to the judge to hand out the sentencing. The judge is merely a mouthpiece, an announcer for whatever decision the jury comes to or reaches. So many times there has been that misconception that the judge has the ultimate power. The judge can overrule or throw out a decision which has been made by the jury. But it is far from the truth. Combian's attempt to escape the Insawam prison was a bit of an indictment on the security and its capabilities, particularly when it comes to prisons, because the story would have been very different had he escaped if that officer had not seen him and had those shots not been fired at them, which eventually would deter them from leaving the prison. Because mind you, not only did Combian have to escape the condemned section where he was, he also had to escape through the main prison yard. And he was extremely close to getting out. Because Combian, who has been characterized as a very high-risk criminal, was only serving his time at Insanwam primarily because of his death sentence because that is where the gallows were. Of course, the hope is that security will be better at these facilities and that more attention would be given to these places that are supposed to house these people in an effort to rehabilitate and correct their wrongs as they try to find a way back into society one way or another condemned or not as we close the book on the story it is important that i recognize my producer the woman who brings these stories out day after day as we seek to find the truth of crime in history jeffa mcafwee thank you and as usual before this episode comes to a close, you know the rule. Stay safe, keep your doors locked, and never stop seeking into the truths of this world. For the Reaper is always watching. My name is John Andrew Addo. I serve as your host, 2024 should be a very interesting year and this is mayhem